What if I told you that I could show you how to catch some fish that have never seen a lure before? That would be pretty cool, would it not? That's exactly what we're going to do on this week's show from a very famous lake. Let's go crappie fishing, maybe using a technique you've never learned before. Our show is on the air right now. You're watching the only program with weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news from the Southeast region. This is Fox Sports Outdoors. Hey everybody, I'm so glad you're with us for this week's episode. We're gonna go out today and teach you some techniques to put crappie in your fish basket or your live well using some techniques that you may have never seen or heard of before. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've got the Nitro Z20 loaded up and ready to go. The Lowrance HDS Live units plugged up. And just in front of me is a very famous lake. I'd like to welcome you in to Lake Fork, Texas. Most people know this as a great big bass lake. Did you know that it's loaded with crappie? Most everybody fishes for crappie around boat docks and stumps and trees and brush. Did you know that a ton of crappie swim around out there in open water that nobody ever fishes for? Well, we're gonna teach you how to locate and catch some of those open water crappie on this week's episode, and you can take these techniques back to your home lake and use them there. While we're out doing that, we're taking you around the region for your local fishing reports from our expert team of insider reporters from lakes, rivers, and bays right near you, both saltwater and freshwater. Right now, though, we get the boat down the boat ramp into famous Lake Fork, and we get things started back at the studio with your weekend planner. These lunar tables are predicting good game fish activity throughout both days this weekend. Peak game fish activity will be around dusk on Saturday and Sunday evening. Morning activity cranks up around dawn both days as well. Plan to be on the water either early or late for the best action. Expect the sun to rise at 7 o'clock and set at 7.56. And evenings will feature a moon that is 59% visible. Stay with us, we've got fishing reports from across the area on the way. Plus, 11-time Bass winner and 2016 Bass Master Classic champion Edwin Evers stops by to answer your Ask the Pro question. Back in a bit. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Mercury, Go Boldly, Lorenz, America's number one fish finder, Gulf Shores and Orange Beach. Request our free 2019 fishing guide at orangebeach.com. We're just out here in open water. There's just nothing here. There's no stumps, no timber, no brush, no grass. Doing down through here, just dead sticking real slow, just kind of pulling out through this open water. There's one. There's a fish. Oh, ooh, that's a decent crappie. Oh, and I have a second rod out right there, and he's in it. But we'll just flop him in the boat just like that and try not to step on him. All right, welcome back, everybody. We've uh, made it out on Lake Fork and uh, there's the first one. We are on a big time cold front today. And it's just gotten downright feeling cold when you think it's supposed to be spring and all of a sudden it cold front blows through, which can happen in the spring, by the way. But let me tell you this, uh, we're talking about open water crappie fishing today. All these fish that are just swimming around, this fish is gonna go in the live well, so I'm gonna hang on to it for a minute because that's a really nice, solid, fat slab fish. So you can see behind me, we're just out here in open water. There's just nothing here. There's no stumps, no timber, no brush, no grass, nothing on the bottom. There's just open water. And occasionally there's some bottom contour, like a long point that runs out in the water, an underwater hump, something like that. These fish live here year round. The only time that they don't live in these open water areas is during the spring spawn. And they'll take turns. They'll migrate. In fact, you can't see it, but right here behind me, is a, a big bay. Right around that point right there is a big bay. So they'll just migrate in around that bay. It's only 150 yards up there. Migrate around that point, go back in that bay, lay their eggs, spawn, turn around and retrace their steps right back out to this open water. And they'll live on these underwater structures and humps really all year long. Now they will get in brush piles. They will get in tree standing timber. 
but you can catch a bunch of crappie just floating around out here in open water. In fact, the pro tournament crappie fishermen that fish the big money crappie tournaments all fish open water. Really, more of them probably live out here. According to Chris Lindenberg, my buddy that owns and runs uh, the Bobby Garland Lure Company, thinks that way more fish live in open water than live up around docks and stumps and structures. So this one goes in the live well. We'll get rigged back up. From giant yellowfin tuna to whiting on the beach to sight fishing for redfish and big spawning sea trout too. All this is going on this week along the coastal south. But first this from our good friends at Miralure. Miralure building quality saltwater lures since 1937, including the new line of Miradine plugs. Turn on the bite anytime, tie on a Miralure. Well, Captain Jack McGowan out of Savannah says the whiting fishing has been excellent up in his uh, region of northeast uh, Georgia. Uh, he says also this is the time for big sea trout. March and early April are very good, and there are some fish that are being picked up now, some big fish. Most of these big trout are being caught on uh, live uh, bait fish, not shrimp, bait fish. In Alabama, my friend Captain Patrick Garmison on Mobile Bay says there's lots of redfish being caught on the eastern shore of the bay around shady dock areas. Areas. In Mississippi, it's still red hot for 60 to 80 pound yellowfin tuna around the offshore oil rigs and gas platforms. Also in Mississippi, there's lots of 4 to 10 pound redfish. These fish are cruising along the barrier island areas. Uh, the, the wade fishermen are catching them uh, and they can sight fish for them. They're seeing these schools move along the, the edges of the islands. There's also plenty of larger spawning trout around the uh, barrier islands along the coast of Mississippi. These are large fish. Well, that's it for the coast south, get out on the water and take a youngster with you when you go. Look how fat that fish is. They're out here eating shad. That's the key and that's how you find them. It's the old principle. There's one. Got a fish on. Hey everybody, welcome back. We're still on Lake Fork today. And uh, we're fishing out in some pretty deep water out here in open water. And I've actually got a few fish working. That's not a that's not a big one. But it's a fish. On a cold front day. And the fish are very lethargic. So I want to talk to you about a couple of techniques that you can use to actually make these fish bite when they don't really want to. That fish will be more than 10 inches, so we're going to keep that one in a second. But I've got a double jig rig worked up here, and I'll show you at the end of the show how we tie it. But I've got one Bobby Garland crappie bait up top. I've got another one about 18 inches down. I'll show you what those are and how everything works. But I'm basically spider rigging without the rod holders. Most people, when they spider rig, they get out of here with rod holders, put six or eight rods out, so that's spider rig, and that's what I'm doing today, except I'm doing it with spinning rods. So what I'm doing is dropping these baits down to the bottom, using my remote control for my Motor Guide XI5 trolling motor, which is just absolutely vital for this kind of fishing. I'm holding that rod steady, and I'm gently lifting up on it just off the bottom, letting it move a little bit, swing with the, with the movement of the boat. I'll drop it back down, touch the bottom with it again, gently swim it back up, and usually, when they bite it, they bite it when it's on its way up, on the swim up. That's spider rigging. Long lining is when you're actually moving quicker. You're actually putting rods behind the boat, a cast out behind the boat, and you're actually moving, watching the speed over ground on your fish finder, on your GPS, and you're moving like anywhere from 0.7 to 0.9 miles an hour, pretty quick, and you're trolling those jigs around and covering water. So the more active the fish are, the more you can catch them long lining, but when they're dormant, cold front day, um, high sky, bluebird sky, when the fish get really finicky, then the spider rigging moving around real slowly with the trolling motor and just letting that jig horizontally hang right in front of those fish's face. They can't stand it, they reach out and they suck it in. That's what we're doing today. Hey folks, it's time for your Carolina's Report. This week brought to you by the Crazy Sister Marina located on the Marsh Walk in Merle's Inlet. We're the leader in water sports. We have been for years. Hey, let us do all your charters, everything you need. We can get you out. I'll tell you what, May is an incredible time of the year. I've been saying it every week. 
Make sure you go to crazysister.com and book your memorable trip with us. Offshore trolling or offshore bottom fishing, we got you taken care of. Let's talk about fresh water. I'll tell you what, I am uh, out myself trying to find some fish laying near the beds here in the Waccamaw River system. I've got the KBD 1.5 in the Delta Red. A great, great bait for this time of the year in the river. I'll tell you what, to match the hatch is exactly what we're trying to do. But let's talk about salt water. And the king mackerel are going to start showing up here in the next couple weeks. It's a great time to get out. Good live baits. You know, Moorhead City, a great area to get up and target big king mackerel. Moorhead, Wrightsville, all that area. Great time to get out and enjoy some offshore trolling for king mackerel this time of the year. This has been your Crazy Sister Marina. Carolina's Report, brought to you by Crazy Sister. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. There's another one. Hey, we got another one, folks. We are, we are hammering it out on Lake Fork today, trying to demonstrate some, some open water fishing techniques, and they don't find a whole lot. They kind of get paralyzed when you reel them up that quick out of deep water, but that's another decent fish on my double jig rig right there. There's the two jigs. And uh, let me explain to you how you find these fish. By the way, that look how fat that fish is. They're out here eating shad. That's the key and that's how you find them. It's the old principle, find the food, find the fish. It's that easy. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get out here with your boat, turn your fish finder on, your sonar, and if you got the really good stuff, like the Lawrence HDS Live that I've got with the three-in-one uh, active scan transducer, you can see everything that's down there and you're looking for bait. You're looking for these balls of bait and you're looking for bait hanging down pretty close to the bottom. Ideally, you want it close to the bottom. Those fish are easier to catch. They start suspending up off the bottom around that bait. They're a little more difficult to catch. You can catch them on these open water techniques like we're doing, but if you can get them right down on the bottom, they're much easier to catch. So you drive around and I'm showing you some shots of my sonar here of what these clumps of shad look like. They're tiny little thread fin shad. These are little inch, inch and a half thread fins is all it is, almost the size of a minnow. But you wanna be on that bait, on your graph, seeing the bait and pulling that little bait, that little Bobby Garland bait up through it like that and those good fat ones like that will hit it. That's just an average fish for Lake Fork. That one goes in the live well, find the bait, find the crop. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Lose, Feel the Difference. Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland, the best in bass and crappie lures, heads to tails. Glacier Glove, stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. Balls Out, made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. We've been able to catch some really nice crappie here on Lake Fork today. Oh, there's another one. It feels like a good pull right there. Welcome back, everybody. We're still at Lake Fork, Texas today. Everybody's world famous Big Bass Lake. A lot of folks don't realize how good the crappie fishing is on Lake Fork. Look at the size of that crappie. Holy cow! There's what you catch when you come crappie fishing on Lake Fork. You catch a fat toad like that. All right, well, you know, we're talking about open water crappie fishing today. And um, it's real easy for folks who have not done this and don't have a lot of confidence in it, doing it for the first time, to get intimidated doing this. They launch their boat, head out in that open water, and get just overwhelmed because it's like a needle in a haystack. Where out of all this open water are the crappie? When they're up in shallow water, it's easy. They're under the docks, they're on the stumps, they're in the brush, they're in the trees, they're on grass beds. When they're out here, where do you find them? Let me give you a few places to start if you just want to start looking for, for where to find some of these open water crappie. Main lake points, a good place to start. River channels, look on your chart on your map and find where the channel winds its way through and fish the ledge of the channel. Mouths of creeks or mouths of coves are always good places. Uh, down in front of the dam, a lot of times rock riprap will slope off and have some drop-offs in front of a dam. Those will be good places. Then, as I mentioned, use your graph, 
drive around, find the bait on those types of locations. You'd like some bottom change, some depth contour, and then there's a good chance you can catch a big one like that. That's a good Lake Fork crappie right there. We're compiling a pretty good mess in the live well today. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama fishing report. Uh, we're glad to have you this week, and there's a lot going on through this region right now. Uh, in Mississippi, uh, a lot of the crappie lakes that are famous, that the, the Mississippi is known for, are still uh, suffering from all that, that rain, that high water, and there's a lot of color, uh, abnormally high water levels still, so the bite's so-so, uh, to say the least. But Arca Butler can be good, but it can be bad. That's, you could stand a chance to catch some real big ones there. The most consistent bite seems to be on Ross Barnett right now. Uh, over in Alabama, uh, one of the cool things going on right now are those fish are really getting around the banks at Gunnersville. Um, a lot of big bass there to be caught right now. Um, a lot of big stripers below the Wilson Dam on Pickwick. And look, don't overlook Wilson this time of year. It's one of the best kept secrets on the Tennessee River. Up in Tennessee right now, the crappie bite's getting really good. The Tennessee River, the fish are staging up. Uh, the water levels are still low in a lot of places, but they're coming up. Uh, bass fishing in Tennessee, I'm going to probably Center Hill right now. Those big spots and smallmouth are moving their way up to spawn, and that lake is beautiful and a great place to catch them. Guys, it is awesome here. The fishing is great. All we need is to see you. We'd love to see you here. God bless. Hey everybody, we've got a thunderstorm building up over the horizon. We've been watching it on the radar and we're about to get out of here. In case you've missed some of this action, out here in open water, we've been able to catch some really nice crappie here on Lake Fork today. It's been a great day, even though the weather's been real iffy and we're about to get rained out. That one right there is a real pig of a crappie right there. That's a big one anywhere in the country you want to go, but these are all really nice fish. This is not all we've caught by any stretch, but that's a few of them right there. These open water techniques will work both in deep and shallow water. Now these fish all came out of fairly deep water, but I've done this up shallow at Lake Weiss in Alabama and uh, at Gunnersville, at Sam Rayburn, at Toledo Bend. These same techniques will work even in the springtime on the pre-spawn and the post-spawn after they're done spawning and transitioning back. You can catch them in those bays, in those creeks. The only tip is you can't be around brush. Do not try this technique around trees, brush, stumps. You'll spend all day being very frustrated getting snagged. Stay in open water, stay away from all that cover and brush, and you can catch a bunch of them like these nice crappie that we caught. You can always watch our latest episode on the front page of our website at foxsportsoutdoors.com. Catch up on past episodes and learn about fishing techniques and new gear at our how-to page. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for new fishing videos every day. Simply search for Fox Sports Outdoors and click the like button on Facebook and the follow button on Twitter. And watch a new episode every week on any device by downloading the free Waypoint TV app on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Fox Sports Outdoors is brought to you by Motor Guide's wireless and easy to use XI3. Waypoint Marine, the Gulf Coast's leading saltwater boating specialist. Strike King, Taiwan On, and Tracker Boats, America's best selling fishing boats. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for the Ask the Pro question. This week, Tracy would like to know if you could give every dad in America one piece of advice, what would it be? For the answer, we asked the 2016 Bass Master Classic champ, Edwin Evers. Hey, my one piece of advice for every dad in America, and I need the advice every day because I'm, I'm guilty of it too, so I'm not pointing my finger. It's not life and death. Whether I'm at a soccer game, a basketball game, or I'm fishing with him, or Whatever it may be, you know, I, I want to see him succeed so much. I get a little fired up on the sidelines once or twice. Like most of the time I can really take it easy, but it's not life and death. It's just sports, it's just fishing, it's just, you know, let them be kids because they're only kids once. And uh, the things we may want on them may not be what they want. You know, I hope to be in a position where I can support him when he gets in high school if he's in the band or he wants to cheerlead or whatever it may be, I want to be there to support him because his direction may not be the same as mine. Thank you, Edwin. If you have a question for one of the pros, visit our website, click on the Ask the Pro link and send it in. Now let's check out the latest Big Catch of the Week winner. 
Hey everybody, we did beat the thunderstorm, made it back to the boat slip, and it's time right now for this week's winner in the Big Catch of the Week contest. Somebody gets their big fish shown on television. He is Sam Hartzog of Moody, Alabama, showing a four and a quarter pound spotted bass he caught at Logan Martin Lake outside Birmingham, Alabama. And if you'd like to be our next winner, just go to our Facebook page at facebook.com and search for Fox Sports Outdoors. You'll see our main page there. Just post your picture there and you could have a chance to be our next winner. Next up on our gear segment, here's some of the tackle that I use to catch these dead sticking or spider rigging crappie with one rod and reel in my hand like you saw today. This is the Lou's Wally Marshall Pro Series medium light action rod. It's a six footer, perfect for what we're doing today. It's paired with a Wally Marshall spinning reel as well. And I've got a double jig rig. They're about 18 inches apart. That top jig is a 1 8 ounce the bottom jig is the heavier 3 16 I've got the top tied on a loop knot. The bottom's just a regular Palomar. I've got them both rigged with Bobby Garland Baby Shad. The top one is a Baby Shad Swim R. The bottom one is a plain Baby Shad. They're both in kind of a pearl translucent color. That seemed to work really well on the crappie today. And I love to use yellow or gold line when I'm crappie fishing. I've proven to myself through the years that it doesn't affect the crappie seeing it. They'll hit it just fine, but I can see my line much better. I can watch the angle of my line as I'm trolling or drifting around and I can watch for any strikes as well. In the 1938 Pulitzer Prize winning Broadway play called Our Town by Thornton Wilder, one of the main characters, Emily, dies giving birth to her second child. But before doing so, she's given a chance to witness again the day she turned 12 years old. Here's the famous line. It goes so fast, she says. We don't have time to look at one another. Goodbye world, goodbye to clocks ticking and mama's sunflowers and food and coffee and new ironed dresses and hot baths and sleeping and waking up. Do any human beings ever realize life while they live it every minute? In our fast paced world of fast schedules and always looking forward to the next thing or the next event, do we ever really slow down to take time, soak in and enjoy the good things that God puts in front of us? It takes a very intentional choice, a decision to stop and breathe and look around and take it all in. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed our trip out to Lake Fork, but more importantly, I hope you learned a few things about catching these open water crappie. Remember, the vast majority of the crappie in any reservoir live out in open water, not on the brush and cover and stumps and docks. And if you learn how to catch those fish, you could put a whole lot more fish in your boat the next time you go fishing. Thanks for joining us on this week's episode. We'll see you next week. Until then, I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.